Hello, everybody out there. So for today's video, I wanted to do a video on the five love languages. Whether you've heard about the five love languages or not, uh, it's definitely gonna be a beneficial video. If you haven't heard about it, then I would definitely pay attention. It's probably gonna be one of the most helpful relationship videos I ever do, probably ever, over the next bajillion and five years that I'm doing these videos. Um, it's, ironically enough, it's not something that I came up with. Um, I don't know the gentleman or lady's name who did come up with the, the five love languages and the idea behind it. Uh, I probably should have Googled that as well, but I did not because I did not. So poor me, <clears throat> but Google it, <clears throat> you can find their name. But if you have heard about the five love languages, I will put a timestamp in here that kind of cuts to the uh, end part of the video so that you can see my thoughts on the five love languages holistically. Uh, past just the breakdown of what they actually are. So for people that haven't heard about the five love languages, essentially what it is, it is five ways that we communicate love with our partners and five ways that our partners communicate love with us. Um, I do believe that there's other, <clears throat> excuse me, love languages or other ways that you communicate love or love can be communicated back to you, but I can definitely tell you that I think these are five of the main big ones. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I did not have these all memorized, so I am going to read them off and then break them down from there one by one and then kind of give my thoughts about it overall. So um, the five love languages are the following, like I said, I have it written down, is number one is words of affirmation, number two is physical touch, number three is receiving gifts, number four, Four is quality time, and number five is acts of service. So starting with number one being words of affirmation, essentially words of affirmation are gonna be you saying nice things to your partner, whether it's in the form of compliments, just kind words, encouraging words, <clears throat> praising them for their successes, whatever it may be, just literally giving them words of affirmation to essentially just say that they're doing positive things, that you appreciate them, whatever it may be. So like I said, it could be as simple as a compliment, telling your girlfriend or your significant other that they're pretty or they're handsome, or you know, just praising them for their accomplishments, whatever it may be. Um, from there, physical touch is obviously pretty straightforward. It's literally just physical touch, whether that's cuddling, holding hands, kissing, sex even, it's, it's any type of actual physical contact and intimacy. So that's pretty obviously straightforward. <laughs> as far as receiving gifts, um, that can be a kind of a wide range of things. So receiving gifts can be something as small as getting like a little love note. It can be actually getting a gift. It can be going to the store and getting your partner uh, energy drink and a protein bar or a cookie or a coffee or whatever it may be, but just sending that to them, giving it to them, dropping it off of the work, whatever it may be. That's kind of the idea of receiving gifts. As far as quality time being number four, essentially just spending a lot of like one-on-one -on -one time with your partner. Uh, it doesn't necessarily always have to be out and about at a dinner uh, or anything like that, like a, like a specific type of date. A lot of those times it can just be at home watching a movie, just spending quiet time with your person uh, in whatever way that they want to or you want to spend time with them one-on-one. -on -one. From there, the last one is acts of service. Um, as far as acts of service go, <clears throat> excuse me, Essentially, acts of service is literally just you doing little things for your partner, whether that's picking up groceries, cooking them breakfast or dinner, um, I don't know, washing the clothes, cleaning up the house, stuff like that is acts of service. Um, washing the dishes, for example. Um, so those are kind of like the quick breakdown of what they actually are. As far as like the idea behind them, the idea is with this like program or like the online five love languages is that there's an, actually a quiz you can take online like again, if you Google it, <clears throat> it'll pop up. There's gonna be like 15 web pages of five love languages, so be prepared for a lot of crap along with the actual page. I believe it's like the second or third link on Google. You'll know because it'll be like the most official looking page. Um, but essentially, it's gonna ask you. It's going to ask you a bunch of questions. The actual test itself was actually designed, if I'm not mistaken, by a relationship therapist, relationship counselor. Um, just like a heads up. If you do kind of delve deeper into the other like things that they offer within the five love languages. Um, the creator of it is a Christian, is a religious person, so understand that a lot of the base of what's being talked about is coming from more of a religious or spiritual place. So a lot of the other work is going to delve more <clears throat> into spiritual relationships with your partner in God and all that jazz. Uh, not that it's bad or good, it's just letting you know that if you dive deeper into it, you're going to get more into that as well. But the actual five love languages itself is a, a quiz. It's going to be, I don't know, like 15 to 30 questions, takes you about five or 10 minutes. You can do it with your partner, you can do it alone. My recommendation is do it by yourself first and then if you wanna take it with your partner together, you can as well. Um, just so you can kinda of like get your own results by yourself first. But once you actually answer the questions, just make sure when you are answering them that you're answering them as honestly as possible. Reason being is that the, the last thing you wanna do is end up uh, 
not answering the questions truthfully or not answering them like how you really feel because then obviously you're going to get different results so i mean if you feel bad about the fact that you like receiving gifts and you don't mark any of the things as you enjoy receiving gifts then obviously you're going to skew your results so just be as honest as possible <clears throat> it is kind of funny though because i have had people before that have recommended to try the five love languages test <clears throat> they ended up telling me like i got I got a physical touch or I got receiving gifts and that's, that isn't, that's not me at all, Ethan. And I'm like, well, if you were honest with yourself and you were honest when you took this little quiz, then I'm going to tell you, it probably is a bigger part of how you express love and receive love than you're aware of. So the idea is once you take the test and what the actual five love languages are is essentially like the ways that you express love more so it's more so the way you receive love, but it's also going to be, we'll get into it later, but it's how you express love. So the five different love languages, again, words of affirmation, physical touch, receiving gifts, quality time, and acts of service. Those are ways that you enjoy receiving love. It's how essentially your love language, how you feel loved from the things that your partner does, whether it's touch, their words, their acts, their gifts, whatever it may be, that's how you end up feeling loved by your partner, regardless of who you're with. So the thing about this is that I think it's really important to figure this out. Because at the end of the day, if you're really in tune and aware of how you actually receive love, it's going to help you a lot in your relationships because you're going to be in a better position to like more healthily, healthy, more of a healthy way for you to communicate <clears throat> with your partner how you need to feel loved. Because I think in a lot of relationships, a lot of people, men and women, they don't always feel as loved as they want to feel loved by their partner. And I think a lot of times that gap is coming from the point in time where we really don't know how we need to feel loved or how we really feel loved. So taking the quiz will kind of break it down for you. So for example, for myself, I fall into words of affirmation and acts of service. So I like being told that I'm doing a good job as a partner, that I look handsome today or I look nice today or whatever it is, words like that, <clears throat> being praised for, you know, <clears throat> finishing a project, something like that. But I also like acts of service. But for me, it's not so much like acts of service as far as like cleaning the house necessarily, but I do like it when my partner makes me dinner or when my partner goes out of their way to do something for me that kind of like frees up more of my my time where it's like, oh, I was supposed to go to the store today, but my partner ended up going to the store and picking up groceries so I didn't have to worry about it. So those are kind of the ways that I receive love. And I think it's really, like I said, again, it's really important for you to like get in tune with this so that you're able to communicate with your partner how you receive love. Now that's kind of the general overview of it. Again, like I said, you're gonna get more information on the website, you're gonna get more information once you take the quiz but I definitely do think it is something that everybody should try, everybody should do. I think it really drastically improves relationships. Now, <clears throat> this is the point in time where I'm gonna kind of cover it like a little bit more in depth. So if you're someone who's already done the quiz or already knows what the five love languages are, this is kind of gonna be more for you. Or if, I guess if you end up going doing the quiz, excuse me, <clears throat> learning about it, then you can watch this again or remember it, whatever works best for you. But my thoughts, number one, is that I think one of the pitfalls we fall into when we do take these kind of quizzes or tests is we put ourselves in a box and we tend to put our partners in a box, which means that if I come up saying that words of affirmation and acts of service are my love language, then that means that those are the only ways that I need to feel loved or those are the most important. But I don't think it's necessarily true. I think that those are things that I communicate to my partner, that those are the ways that I feel most loved, but that doesn't mean that physical touch, receiving gifts, and quality time aren't important to me. It doesn't mean that those things from my partner aren't going to make me feel loved. So same thing with you to your partner. Don't put them in a box and say, oh, all my girl wants is physical touch and quality time, so I don't need the compliment her, I don't need to do anything for her around the house, acts of service, and I don't need to buy her any gifts ever. I'm not saying you have to do those things all the time, everything, <clears throat> but just realize because your results say one thing, it doesn't mean that you just fall into that one box. Uh, the way I kind of like to express it is, let's say for me, like words of affirmation, acts of service, those make me feel, I don't know, like 25% loved or 50% loved each. It's still going to be 10 to 20% that I get from physical touch or receiving gifts or uh, quality time. I'm still going to feel love from that. It's just not going to be the biggest and best way to show me love, especially when I'm needing to feel loved. And it's going to go the same way back to your partner. Now, another thing <clears throat> that I think is kind of important to think about is that not only do you not want to fall into a box, but you also want to make sure that when you are 
like doing these acts, like not acts of service, but I guess when you're performing these love languages, you really want to find out what your partner like constitutes as acts of service or physical touch. Because physical touch to a guy and to a girl, like as far as like receiving love could be very different. For a guy, it could literally just mean like sex. Like I could just be straight up, that's what I need, physical intimacy, it's important to me, it's my love language, and it means sex. Whereas to a woman, it could mean cuddling, holding hands, kissing in public, or I mean, it could literally be flopped, flip-flopped. It really doesn't matter what the gender is, but I'm just saying, just be aware that you need to have that conversation once you do all this to really know like what those actual things mean to them. Don't, don't just go off what the website says. Don't just go off of what you think. Really ask and have that true conversation. So I think that's really important as well. Um, there is one more thing that I really wanted to touch on and my brain's like completely blanking on it. So I said, don't fall into a box. Make sure you have that conversation. And there was one more big one. And I literally can't remember what it is. So I do apologize that it's not like populating in my brain. Normally like it actually like works and I can like think of what I want to say. But there was like one more really big key part of the five love languages. I'm really trying to remember what it was. Um, give me like 10 seconds of time. Maybe, maybe I'll have to like put a timestamp in here, but I really gotta think of what it is. So don't fall into a box. <laughs> don't fall into a box. Make sure you have the conversation. I really can't remember what it is. So I'm gonna probably end up for the first time ever, at least for the YouTube people that watch this video, probably gonna have to like edit that in there because I honest to God cannot remember what the like the third thing I really wanted to touch on as far as like within the five love languages was just to make sure that like it's one of those like pitfalls that I guess you avoid or like you're least thinking about. So I do apologize that I can't remember. Um, so what I would say as far as like a go-to or what I would ask everybody to do who does watch this video is really go try it. Go online, like I said, Google it. Find out what your love language is. Find out what your partner's love language is. Have that conversation as far as like how you want to give and receive love. I remember what it is. Oh, look at that. My brain just like clicked on. So, I'm oh, sorry. It's so funny. So the last thing I'm going to tell you, <clears throat> last like pitfall that I fell into a lot at the beginning. Wow. I'm like, it's like so funny how this video is going to jump and I was doing so well is <clears throat> for me, I like words of affirmation and acts of service. That's really how I feel loved. So for the longest time, the way I always expressed love was, well, you guess, you can probably guess, like it was words of affirmation and acts of service. And cause that's how I receive love. That's how I feel love. So that's how I loved other people. And in relationships I've been in the past, I was like not understanding why they weren't feeling love from what I was doing. But that wasn't always necessarily my partner's love language. So that's the other thing I would tell you is be aware that if you're not in a relationship right now and it's something that you that you want to be in a relationship in the future, or even if you're in a relationship right now, is just be aware that you're going to have those moments where you're going to like lean towards loving your partner the way that you feel loved. So make sure that you're taking that time to realize like, okay, like this makes me feel loved, but is this going to make my partner feel loved? Is that my partner's love language? Or if you're single, <clears throat> you get with somebody and it's a serious relationship, make sure that you have them do this because it'll be helpful and beneficial for your relationship. And then just don't get caught in that pitfall or trap of loving your partner in the way and the love language that you feel loved in. Because it's something that I had a hard time with for a long time. So it's my last like little tip and recommendation within it for people who have already done this or people that do it in the future. So that is what I have for the video. Like I said, it was gonna be kind of short, but that was kind of the name of the game that I just wanted to like do a uh, helpful informational video that I think is actually really, really important for relationships. I would honestly say, that if you do this and you have an honest conversation with your partner and I would also recommend maybe like once every year sitting down and doing this again by yourself and then doing it with your partner. Uh, the reason being is that I think our love languages change a little bit. I think as we grow up, we kind of figure out what's more important and how we want to feel loved. As we have bad relationships or good relationships, we see like what's more important and like how we want to be loved or how we don't want to be loved or what really matters at the end of the day really to us as we grow up. So I'd recommend as you go forward, <clears throat> whether it's with a new partner or the same relationship that you've been in for five years, I would really recommend continuing to do this every year or so just so that you have the opportunity to really make sure and check in that your love language isn't changing and that your partner's love language isn't changing. Because at the end of the day, if you get, like I said, if you get caught in that trap where you're like, oh, we did this test two, three years ago and you're still trying to love your partner a certain way or they're trying to love you a certain way, you don't want to be, do, you know, you don't want to be loving them in the wrong love language and you don't want to be loved in your wrong love language because then you're going to kind of have some strife. So make sure you're doing, like I said, probably once a year. That'd be my recommendation. So 
that is what I have for the actual video and what I have as far as for the YouTube friends out there that are watching. So I'm gonna do some live questions on Twitch as well as Facebook Live. Um, if you do wanna ask live questions, feel free. Live streams are Mondays and Wednesdays at 7.30 and Saturdays usually around 7, 7.30 as well, Central Time. If you don't wanna ask live questions or you just want me to answer your questions directly, feel free to message me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever you want, put in the comments, doesn't matter. I love answering people's questions. The whole point of this channel at the end of the day is to help 100 million people. Uh, at the end of the day, helping 100 million people is like the absolute dead serious goal. It's a crazy number. I don't ever like wanna really ask people to like, like or subscribe to my stuff on YouTube or Facebook or anywhere else, but what I would ask is if you do watch this video, you do watch these live streams, you do get something out of it, if it's gonna positively impact your life or it is positively impacting your life or it does in the future, I would ask you to share the content. Or if you feel like it'll be helpful for somebody else, maybe they're going through some relationship problems, troubles, you could always recommend it to them. Let them know, shoot them the link. You Google it for them and then send it to them, text to them. Don't have to even tell them it's for me. Just the idea that we're gonna be able to help more people by sharing quality quant content, <laughs> quality content that's gonna impact people's lives in a positive way. Whether it's small stuff like brightening somebody's day or completely changing their life or somewhere in the middle like this kind of video where it's gonna positively impact the relationships with their significant others. Also, one more little tidbit. With this video, um, there is love languages for children. So if you do have kids, this video is also helpful for that because that same dude or gal who made this program does also have it where there's love language for children and how children feel love from their parents. So it's another thing I would recommend is if you do end up doing it for your relationship, you can also take five minutes to do it for your kids. So you can kind of figure out how they like to feel loved and how you can love them effectively as well. So that's what I got guys. So I'm gonna answer some questions live. So for everybody on YouTube, uh, I'll talk to you guys real soon. For all the YouTube friends, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll talk to you guys real soon, guys. Bye.